Everyone in the UK and in much of Europe is all talking about uh, the horse meat scandal. The supermarket Tesco's and um, Findus brand uh, frozen foods, a variety of other food outlets have been found to have been selling horse meat labelled as beef. And then more recently it was revealed that the Swedish uh, store IKEA was also selling horse meat uh, in its Swedish meatballs which wasn't labelled and uh, even Taco Bell in the, in the United States has now been found to be selling horse meat. Um, this is more of an issue about labelling food correctly than actually whether or not people should eat horse. But one thing that's interesting in, in uh, America and in England is the general distaste for the idea of eating horses. That taboo goes back to the pagan past of the Anglo-Saxons, Catholicism regarded consumption of horse meat in Northern Europe, places like Iceland, Sweden and England, as being an aspect of heathen worship and heathen sacrifice. The Pope Gregory III wrote to the Anglo-Saxon Saint Boniface when he was a missionary amongst the pagan Saxons in Germany, and he wrote, You say, among other things, that some have the habit of eating wild horses, and very many eat tame horses. This, holy brother, you are in no wise to permit in future, but are to suppress it in every possible way, with the help of Christ, and impose suitable penance upon the offenders, it is a filthy, abominable practice. When people in England and Iceland converted to Christianity, they also banned the eating of horse meat. You get ex examples of this in uh, Njal Saga, uh, the Icelandic Viking saga, uh, where the Christians say, this will be the foundation of our law, that all men in this land are to be Christians and believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and give up the worship of false idols, and the exposure of children, and the eating of horse meat. In 7th century England, Theodore of Tarsus, the Archbishop of, of Canterbury, specifically says that consumption of horse meat should not be banned. This diplomatic decision, which was trying to sort of ease the Anglo-Saxons in, from paganism into Christianity, was only temporary. Eventually, you know, horse meat was out of the question. I've, uh, got some horse meat myself right here. But I'll use this horse meat to show you a story from the Viking book Hemskringla, written in the 13th century. It's about a Christian king, Harkon the Good. And he attended Thing, where which was like a, a meeting of heathens in Norway. These meetings were called Thing, and they were very important to the heathens. They, they would initially have a, a toast. The first toast was drunk to Odin, this, that was drunk to victory and to the power of the king. The second toast was to Njorda, god of the sea, and the third toast to Freya for prosperity and peace. These are all pagan gods, and of course a Christian king would not be happy about drinking toast to Odin or anything like that. But the other aspect of this meeting, which is made clear, is that they all ate horse meat, and that was somehow an aspect of this pagan ritual. King Harkon said to all these pagans that they had to convert to Christianity and they were not happy about that at all saying in reply what we farmers thought King Harkon when you held the first assembly here at Thrandheimer and we had accepted you as king and received from you our ancestral rights was that we then had heaven in our grasp but now we are not sure which is more the case that we will have received freedom or that you will have had us enslaved anew in an amazing way that we should abandon the beliefs that our fathers held before us and all our forefathers, and they have been far more noble than we, and yet these beliefs have served us well. Eventually the farmers ask the king to sacrifice for their prosperity, to prove, you know, his loyalty to them, despite the religious differences. The king isn't happy about this, of course, because he doesn't want to go to hell for taking part in these pagan rituals. But if he does upset all these pagans, then they're probably not going to accept him as king anyway. The king attends a sacrificial feast. The first toast was served at the feast, and Jarl Sigurdr announced it and dedicated it to Odin, and drank from the horn to the king. The king takes the toast and made the sign of the cross over it. Then Kar of Grittinger spoke. Why does the king do that? Does he not want to worship Odin? Jarl Sigurdr replies, The king is doing what all those who do trust in their might and dedicate the toast to Thor. He made the sign of the hammer before he drunk. So this kind of tricking the pagans into thinking the sign of the cross is the sign of Thor's hammer. And then for the rest of the evening it's more peaceful. The next day the people went to the table. The farmers rush up to the king saying that he must now eat the 
horse flesh. The, the king said he would not do that. So they said, okay, how about you just have a little bit of the gravy? I'm not going to do that. At this point, the pagans were on the brink of attacking and killing the king because they were pretty fed up with him refusing all the horse meat. They kind of come to an agreement. Jarl Sigurda told the king to lean with his mouth open over the handle of the pot where the steam from the cooking of the horse flesh had risen up and the handle was covered with fat. Then the king went up, wrapped a cloth around the handle and opened his mouth over it and then he went back to his throne and neither side was pleased with this. This horse meat was not just about food. Eating horse meat was definitely associated with paganism and that a Christian would never even so much as put his mouth over a handle of a pot which had the fat of a horse on it. So hopefully uh, I won't go to hell for having this steak. Mm. If you want to learn more about pagans and horses, click the link in the description of this video and you'll see my dissertation on the subject of horses in pre-Christian Northern Europe.